In just a few short minutes, you'll be able to start playing your favorite Xbox 360 games through the power of emulation on your PC. Stick around because you're about to level up your setup. Before you download the emulator, I think it's worth taking a look at this compatibility list shown on screen and linked in the video description to make sure that the backups of the games you want to play are compatible with the emulator. You can look at the list in two ways. The first one is it ships in alphabetical order by game, but if you want to sort it out by just the games that are both bootable and working, right click on the letter G for this column and change this to sort Z by A. The game list will now be sorted by both bootable and playable in the emulator. This just gives you another way to look at the games that are compatible with the emulator rather than searching for titles one by one. Everything that you're gonna need to set up Xenia and get it up and running on your computer is linked in a single all-in-one download file on my website, and it's linked for you in the video description. When you go to this webpage, here's what you'll find. You'll see the most recent video guide, which you're looking at right now, some recommendations for products that will help you get the most out of your Xenia emulator experience, some basic information about the emulator and what's inside the all-in-one file, and the link to the download for the all-in-one file with the sources cited below. Click the green download button to download the all-in-one zip file to your computer. All right, let's make heads or tails of what's inside the all-in-one file. Open up a new file explorer window and navigate to the downloads folder. Inside downloads, you'll find this zip file. Right click on it, select extract all, and click extract at the bottom right corner to extract the contents into a folder inside your downloads folder. Once the extract process is complete, you no longer need the zip file. Right click on it, and delete it to send it to the recycle bin. And remember, anything that you delete and send to the recycle bin is still archived there if you need it. Navigate to the newly uncompressed all-in-one folder and double click into it. Here's what you'll find inside. You'll find the standalone version of Xenia Canary in a folder, and you'll also find three versions of the Visual C++ redistributable package from Microsoft. In this case, I'm using an x64 computer, but select the one that matches the version of Windows that you're running and double click on the file. This is a necessary add-on for Windows for the emulator to run correctly. Click I agree on the left side of the screen, then click install. At the UAC prompt that appears, click yes to continue. The installation takes only a moment. Once the installation process is complete, click close in the bottom right corner to close out the installer. You won't need any of these installers moving forward. You can highlight all of them, right click, and delete all of them at one time to send them all to the recycle bin. Sometimes when you launch emulators for the first time, they have to set some files or folders up for things to work correctly. That's the case for Xenia. Double click into the folder, locate the Xenia executable file and double click on it. This is gonna open up the Xenia emulator and you'll see, well, absolutely nothing on screen. But don't worry, this is part of the process. For now, go up to the red X in the top right corner of the Xenia window and click on it to close out the emulator. You'll now see that there are some new files that the emulator has created for you. When you download Xenia, it ships to you in a demo mode. If you want to be able to run retail content on Xenia, you'll need to make a change to one of these files. In fact, it's one of those files that Xenia created for you when you ran it the first time. It's this file right here called xenia.canary.config.toml. Before you make any changes to this file, I recommend that you right click on it, copy it, then right click beside it somewhere and paste it so that you have a copy of the original configuration file that shipped with the emulator, just in case you need it in the future. Now that you have the original configuration file backed up, click on the original file, then click on the name so that you can add an extension to it. Once you have access to change the extension, go past the .toml and add the extension .txt. Once you have this entered, press the return key on your keyboard. You'll be asked if you want to change this file's extension. You do, so select yes to add the .txt extension to this file. This will let you edit this file with any text editing tool in Windows. In this case, I'll just double click on it to open it up in Notepad. You can scroll through all of these text configurations to find what you're looking for if you like, but it makes much more sense to just search for what you need using the Find tool. To do this, click on Edit, then scroll down to the listing to Find and click on it. Inside the Find box, type the word License, L-I-C-E-N-S-E, -E, and press the Return key. This will take you to the correct spot inside the configuration document. Here, I'm going to scroll the screen some and then zoom in so you can see what's going on here. All you have to do with this setting is change this from a 0 to 1, 
Right click off to the side of the zero, backspace over it, and type the number one on your keyboard. This will change the program from demo mode to retail mode. To lock in this setting, come over to file, click on it, and scroll down to save. Now you can close out the configuration file by clicking on the red X at the top right corner of the editor. For the configuration file to work with the emulator, you have to remove the .txt from the file name. Go back up to the file, click on it, and then click on the name once again. This time, go all the way to the end of the name of the file, pass the extension, and then backspace over the .txt and press the return key. Once again, you'll see the prompt appear asking you if you want to confirm this change. You do. Click on yes to close out this dialog box and return the file to .toml extension. You can either choose to keep the backup of your original configuration file or delete it. In this case, I'm going to save it just in case it's ever needed down the road. Seeing as how the Xbox 360 used a Microsoft gamepad, I think it makes sense to pair a Microsoft gamepad with the emulator. To do this, I'm going to show you how to pair an Xbox wireless controller with Windows to use with the emulator. Start typing Bluetooth in the search bar and the first listing that appears will be the Bluetooth pairing tool. Click on this, then click on add device on the right side of the screen. Then at the list of choices that appear, click Bluetooth near the top of the screen. This will put Windows in device pairing mode. On the face of the gamepad, press and hold the Xbox button until it starts to flash. Look on the top of the controller and you'll find a pairing button. Press and hold this button until the Xbox light starts to fast flash. Back on Windows, you'll see that the Xbox wireless controller has now been recognized. Click on it with the mouse pointer and it will be paired to your computer for use with the emulator. The Xbox light on your controller will also stop flashing and stay turned on. Now you can close out the Bluetooth pairing tool in the bottom right corner and close out the Bluetooth settings window by clicking the red X in the top right corner. Now you're ready to launch the emulator again, and you've got things set up and ready to go. Navigate to the Xenia.exe file and double click on it to relaunch the emulator. You can configure a number of settings inside the emulator, but there's one setting here that I think will be of importance to every gamer that plays Xenia, and that's the ability to put it in full screen. To do this, go up to display and you'll see a listing here for full screen. Just click this at any time during gameplay to be able to play your games in full screen on your computer. All right, you've put in the work. Now it's time to enjoy the rewards. Let's launch a game for the first time. Go up to File in the top left corner and click on File. Then navigate down to Open with the pointer and select it. You'll most likely be in the Xenia Canary folder and you'll need to navigate to the location where your games are located. In this case, I have some .iso games backed up and saved in a folder in Windows called Demo. So I'm just going to click on Demo here to access those .iso files. So they're in Demo and Microsoft Xbox 360. Inside this folder, I have several .iso files I've backed up, and the first one's called Devil May Cry HD Collection. Click on the .iso game that you want to launch, and then select Open near the bottom right corner of the window. And sure enough, the game loads right into the emulator and launches immediately. Nice! And since you made it this far, here's a bonus tip. If you have an HDR compatible display and you have HDR turned on in Windows, Xenia will be able to show your Xbox 360 gameplay in HDR. Just start the game of your choice and Windows will take over from there and apply auto HDR to your Xenia gameplay. It really is amazing to be able to play these games on modern hardware on modern displays. You know, the Xbox 360 is not the only console of this generation that you can play on your PC through emulation. Check this out. I have this complete guide for playing PlayStation 3 games through emulation on your PC as well. It's linked for you in the video description and pinned comment. I'll see you over there.